Hi and welcome to this video log with me Wayne from SwimmingCyclingRunning.com. Well we're back to testing shoes. Are you spending too much on your running shoes? Remember in the first part of this series we found that the Costco running shoe was actually costing us less power to run a particular distance than all the other 130 pound shoes that I have. That's particularly disappointing. But does that transfer to when you run outdoors? Remember, if you want help with your running, you can head to my website where we do online coaching and one-to-ones. We can get filming you and we can see if your form's right or we can provide a complete plan for your key race that you've got for next year. When we start running outside and up hills and down dales, does the court shoe still come out as best? Okay, we've devised a particular course for this. We'll go to the computer, describe it, then look at our results. So here's a view of the overall route that I took on these particular runs, and each was, one was done nine exactly the same. We obviously warmed up, and then I actually started running on my first lap just about here, um, and that is all the way down round this loop and back up to there. That's the first 1570 run. The second run was once round this complete loop, and that's about 1100 metres. The third one, which is about 770 metres, was down here and up to this road. Fourth from here, up to the starting point. Fifth was uphill to this corner here. And the last and sixth was from this point all the way uphill to here. And each one hopefully is repeatable. It might be easier if we look at these in training peaks, which gives more detail. So here we are in Training Peaks, and you can see from this map here that it's the same run that I did. But we do get more details in Training Peaks on the actual individual elements. Let's take that first run lap, which is here. And we can see we start off, the grey area is, is, is elevation. We start off at 121 metres in height. We go down to 86 and then back up to 110. So that's a fairly hilly circuit in all. Um, and say it covers... 1.57 metres, so it's 1,570 metres, um, and the elevation gain is 35 metres and the elevation loss is 46. So it's slightly more downhill than uphill, but there's quite a lot of climbing in that one. Now the second lap is slightly different. That's a complete loop. It's 1.1 kilometres, and it's a loop of that up and down section. And you can tell that because elevation gain is 19 metres, elevation loss 21 metres. Although we're coming back to exactly where we started, so it should actually be equal. Now interestingly in this, we can see that my power as I run downhill, coming downhill in this section, reduces dramatically. But obviously the necess necessity to go uphill means I'm increasing that power as I get towards the top. Now the third lap was predominantly downhill. You can see this downhill section, but it does have a couple of uphill bits. Now it's 740 metres. You can see the elevation gain is 6 metres, so there's the uphill bit, but it's 16 metres loss of elevation, so that's quite different. Now it is interesting to start looking at this. The immediacy of power, you can see when I have to run downhill I lose the power, but when I have to run uphill I immediately have to increase the power. Now that 4 is predominantly uphill. It's 280 metres and effectively elevation gain is 15 metres and elevation loss is 4 metres. So it's uphill all that way. And the power putting down is approximately 263 watts. We're putting down quite a bit of power on this because it is uphill. Now the fifth lap is predominantly uphill. You can see here it rises steeply. It's 70 metres and it climbs 8 metres in total. So that's more than 1 in 10. So that's quite a steep section. Now the sixth and final lap is predominantly uphill. At the start it's a little bit of downhill but then it really steeply rises. And you can see it's 170 metres and there's in total 16 metres of elevation gain. And the output we have to put out there is 300 watts. Now that 300 watts is me trying to go steady. I'm not trying to really burn up this hill. So with this steeper hill you really do have to work a little bit harder than you would normally. Now after each of these runs I looked at the individual laps in the Stride Power Centre and from that I could take all the data off and put it in a useful spreadsheet. And here's an overview of the spreadsheet we actually created after that where we have each shoe and each run detailed. 
so that we can analyze it more fully. But obviously what we want to do is you want to compare one run with the same run on each shoe. So we'll take a look at that now. So if we take a look at the first 1570 meter lap, and if you see a difference here, it's just where I started that run, which was a flat section. We have an elevation loss of 35 meters, an elevation gain of 20 meters. You can see from the profile that we saw before, it is quite hilly. Um, now, amazingly, once again, to run that loop, the lowest cost in terms of power comes from the Costco court shoe. That's cost me 201 watts on, on average. However, it does come, it seems, with the cost. If you look at speed, it's the slowest shoe around. The fastest shoe, uh, 9.7 kilometers an hour, is the Pegasus shoe. But I wonder, because that has a a running cost, a power cost of 209 meters. If that's because of the feel of a shoe, if a shoe feels fast, perhaps you naturally run a little bit faster. And remember, on all of these, I'm trying to run at an even pace, just a steady, even pace. If we now go on to the second of the laps, the 1110 meter loop, which is a loop, so we start at an elevation, go down, then come back, back up to that same elevation. Once again, the Costco court shoe are requiring of me the least amount of power to run that loop, which is equivalent to the on cloud runner. Now the highest power requirement comes from the Pegasus, second from the Newtons, third from the on cloud flow. But it's interesting to note that exactly reflects the speed I'm running. So the highest power is the fastest speed, second highest power is second highest speed, third highest and so on. The difference comes in these two here, which require the same power, but a slightly different amount of speed I get in each, because the actual Costco court shoe is running slower than the on cloud runner. And that's an interesting factor, because what we really want to do is we want to couple our speed with our power. And if something allows us to run faster at a given power, then that for us has to be a better shoe. We're now on our third lap. Remember, this is 740 metres predominantly downhill, just with a couple of kick-ups. So we have an elevation loss of 17 metres. We're again seeing exactly the same pattern. The on-cloud runner and the Costco court shoe require the least amount of power. The most amount of power is required by the Pegasus. But we're now seeing the on-cloud flow only slightly above those two low-powered, but with a far faster speed. So we are starting to see a slight difference between all the shoes. And we're also trying seeing a difference between the Costco court shoe and the on cloud runner, because the on cloud runner clearly is a faster shoe than the Costco court shoe. However, if we look at running economy, remember that's the oxygen necessary to fuel our muscles, the on cloud flows are looking particularly good, especially as they're getting above 10 kilometers an hour there. The Costco court shoe looks to be costing me in terms of running economy. And that may be particularly significant as we try to run longer distances. Now on that 270 meter uphill section that we saw back to the start place. And once again, the court shoe require the least amount of power to run it. But yet again, they are the slowest shoe, and this time by a, uh, quite some way. Now we are going uphill, and they are almost double the weight of any other shoe. So that's not surprising. If you look at the running economy, as we might expect, we're looking at running economy with a court shoe bad. On Cloud Runner surprisingly poor there, but good are the Pegasus and the Newtons. Um, cloud flows just taking that up at a rear. So we're starting to see a difference between all these shoes in different situations. Now a second to last lap is the 90 meter uphill section. Um, and here we're having the lowest power requirement from the on cloud runner. Um, but they aren't particularly fast, just like the court shoe, 9.7 and 9.6 kilometers an hour. Whereas the Pegasus again is a fast shoe and the Newtons are beating it on a lower power requirement. We're now on to the final 170 meter uphill section where we're climbing 16 meters in that 170. And here the Newtons are coming out as the lowest requirement for power for that run. But we are only running at 9.94 kilometers an hour. The highest requirement comes from the Pegasus yet again but we are running at 10.6 kilometers an hour. 
Um, next to that are the on-cloud flow. The lowest speeds occur between the Costco court shoe and the on-cloud runner. So these two are now looking to be pretty slow shoes, even if they cost us slightly less in power. Um, we have a, an unusual situation between the Newtons, the Pegasus, and the Cloud Flow, that if we actually ran in the Newtons at 276 watts, would we gain that speed that we've lost from 9.94 to 10.6? Exactly the same with the Cloud Flows. Would we gain that 0.4 we need if we just increased our power by 5 watts? So now let's just take a look at the averages for all those runs. As we might expect, we have a power requirement low in both the court shoe and the on-cloud runner, but it's coming at a cost. The cost is we're running at a slower pace. Now the fastest shoe is the Pegasus by far. It has been throughout. However, if we look at running economy, it's actually costing us more to run that, obviously, than it would else other shoes. And also on running economy, remember this is the cost, oxygen cost of running, which is hugely important. Um, the Costco's court shoe are far higher than all the others. The lowest requirement for oxygen comes from the Newtons, with the second lowest being the on-cloud flow. So we can look at these shoes now in a slightly different way. We can say that the Pegasus actually make us want to run faster, but that's coming at a slight cost. In terms of running fast, the Newtons, the Pegasus and the on-cloud flow are far better the on -cloud, than the on-cloud runner and the Costco court shoe. And clearly the weight of the Costco court shoe is costing us in terms of speed. But it doesn't, interestingly, cost us in terms of power. If somehow we could turn that lack of ne necessary power to run in that shoe into speed, perhaps it actually might become a reasonable shoe. So as we might expect, a shoe that weighs 447 grams opposed to shoes weighing 120 to 130 grams does actually cost us in something. It costs us in speed. So we could say that if we didn't really worry about speed, if you just wanted to trot along at a particular power level, the Costco court shoe actually might be reasonably good. However, when we get to hills, it's another matter. The Costco court shoe does start costing us in terms of power and in terms of speed when we go uphill because the extra weight, effectively almost double the weight of the others, is actually costing us with every metre we travel uphill. So I think to conclude, the answer is yes, we probably are wasting money on shoes. I don't think these are necessarily worth four or five times what these are, but happiness when you're running is a huge thing. Being just in your zone is absolutely wonderful if you can get there. So if you find a particular shoe at whatever cost that makes you feel as if you really want to go out running, that's probably the shoe that you should be running in. Okay, that's it for this week. Thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed our exploration of different priced shoes and what they actually cost you in terms of power. Thanks very much for watching. See you next week. Thank you.